All right, if you'll bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for the beauty of your creation and the wonder of and majesty of this wonderful world in which you've blessed us with. We thank you for the opportunity to come together as women to study your word. We thank you for the encouragement and the love that we share in, in your church. Lord God, we have those that we are bringing before you tonight. We pray for Clay and Victoria and Ghana. We pray for their health and safety. And we pray that um, Clay will be able to come home on time and that he will stay healthy. We pray for Jerry Smith and his family in the loss of Marsha. We pray that you will comfort that family, give them um, encouragement, comfort, and help them to know that uh, we love and care for them and, and just uh, fill them with your peace. Lord, we pray for uh, Rhonda and her family as they continue to grieve her the death of her father. And we just pray for a blessing of peace and comfort on that whole family. We pray especially for Carol and Harold Davidson. Uh, be with Harold. Um, we pray that you will um, heal him if it's your will. We pray that uh, you will be with Carol and, and help her to feel your comfort and your peace and help her to... Um, to know that she is loved and cared for and, and that uh, we are um, with her in, in our, our thoughts and our prayers. Um, we pray for those that are traveling, Lord, um, to CYC this weekend. Pray for safety for the tr group. And we pray that you will um, bless their time together, that they will be encouraged and they will grow in their understanding and their knowledge of you. And and learning more about you and, and being encouraged by the number of Christians and, and, and kids that are just like them that are um, at, at uh, work to, um, to, to know more about you and to uh, stand out in the world as, as Christ-like examples. We pray that you be with Georgiana and you bless her in the decisions that she has to make. We pray that you will give her wisdom and understanding and guide her in what she needs to do. And Lord, we also pray for Aaron and the accident that he had. We pray that you heal his body. We pray that um, the healing will be full and complete and that you will give peace and comfort to his family as, as they go through this difficult time. Please bless Jennifer tonight as she teaches um, our class and pray that uh, we can all come away with something we can carry throughout the week. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for us. Thank you that we can come to you and pray and we can lay all of our burdens and our joys and our concerns at your feet. And it's in Jesus' holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, so here we are. Um, it's the last week of February. Uh, that went fast. And um, this is our last week of Song of Songs. There we go. Here is our new study starts next week. Um, the fragrance of faith, discovering the aroma of Christ in the Beatitudes um, for, by Cassandra Martin. And so that will, we will kick that off um, the beginning of March, March 2nd. Here's the outline for that study. Um, starting off with three just general topics and then kind of just going through the Beatitudes. Um, so it should be a, a really good study, a lot of fun. So um, I am going to be reviewing and continuing the lesson from two weeks ago, and then just um, tagging on the end, um, just the very end of Song of Songs, because it doesn't really end. Um, <laughs> it's not really an ending per se. Um, but anyway, we're still, we're basically talking about our glorious God still. Um, that was the title two weeks ago, um, but we are continuing to talk about what a glorious God we serve. Okay, if everybody would mute themselves, we are going to sing, I am resolved.
Okay. Um, so we are going to be talking about hastening. Um, and so I thought of that song. I had several that went through my mind and um, Clay kept telling me before he left, you need to tell me your songs so I can get you the slides. I don't know if I'll be able to, you know, get that to you in a timely manner from over there. And I just couldn't make up my mind, couldn't make up my mind. And then I found this and found that one with that beautiful spring-like picture. <laughs> and I thought that's perfect for tonight to encourage us with, um, even though we didn't have the music actually with it, we, you know, we had the words and we had that, that great picture. Um, so two weeks ago, we started out by talking about um, that, which is truly awesome. You know, we use the word awesome a lot in our, um, in our society um, to describe lots of things that, that, that are good, <laughs> but maybe not really awesome for the, you know, real definition of awesome. So um, we looked at God's fight for us is awesome. Um, that was Song of Songs, where he talked about, um, you know, the woman is described um, not only as beautiful, but also as awesome, like an army um, marching, because we are warriors in this spiritual fight. And that was in two different places in Song of Songs 6. We talked about, you know, putting on the whole armor of God, because we are warriors, and we do need to be prepared to stand. Um, and I reminded everybody of this um, scripture in um, Second Kings, where Elisha prays that um, his companion, his eyes will be opened and he will see um, the armies of heaven who are there. Um, to help Elijah and to encourage him and to fight for him. And we just need to remember that too. A lot of times, you know, I said, I we talked about when we have spiritual victories, um, that's beautiful to our God. And, um, and we need, but we need to remember that heaven's armies are there. You know, God himself is inside of us. We have that power um, to overcome and to fight and win those spiritual battles. And Christ's affection, we talked about um, his affection for us and how that is truly awesome. That is an awesome, awesome thing. Um, and we continued in Ephesians 5, um, where he talks about um, husbands and wives, but he also compares them to Christ and his church and how Christ cleanses us. He presents us um, without spot, wrinkle, um, holy and without blemish. Um, you know, we, he has done all this for us. Um, he loves us as his own body. He nourishes and cherishes us. So his affection is truly awesome. And we talked about how submission is awesome. Um, you know, that's submission is hard. It's difficult. Um, but it is something that is awesome in God's eyes. Um, he, you know, requires submission, um, to each other, to, to him, to Christ, um, to our elders, to our husbands. Um, so again, in Ephesians five, um, we, we read about, you know, the submission and, and God holds, um, those who we submit to, he holds them more accountable like our husbands. And, um, so anyway, submission is difficult, but here are some quotes by Heidi Goman. Um, Christ's love for us makes the idea of submitting sweet gospel rather than harsh law. Um, submission is a response of love and trust. It is gushing affection shown to a God who loved us first. And submission is rarely easy but his love makes submission possible and his power within us. And so then we went on to talk about, um, you know, we were talking about things that are truly awesome. And then we started talking about the glory of gardens because in Song of Songs 6, um, the lovers are meeting in a garden and how beautiful a garden can be, how peaceful it can be, how, um, encouraging and just um just a wonderful place and um god really 
um, uses gardens and obviously has gardens throughout um, throughout the Bible, throughout our story um, in the Bible. And of course, the lovers were meeting in the garden. Um, and I, I picked this verse out because I just thought um, in, in Song of Songs 6, it talks about the lilies. Um, and then we have this other reference to the lilies and to Solomon in the same verse. Um, Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? Um, so the glory, part of the glory of the gardens is that we can look at them and see how God, you know, arrays the flowers and the trees and, um, and all the things that would be in a garden, um, but, but yet he takes care of us even so much more. And here's our picture of this peaceful, wonderful garden with lilies, um, just to get, you know, we talked a lot about um, the things we think about when we're in a garden or when we see a garden or um, why gardens might have been used throughout it. And then here's another quote by Heidi Goman. Um, she says, God's plan since the creation of the world follows a garden path of love and care from the moment of light's creation um, or creation in the Garden of Eden to the redemption of the world in the empty garden tomb and on to the tree of life in the blessed restoration to come. And so we, we got through um, the garden... Let's go back a minute. The Garden of Creation, that's what we were kind of going for there. And she even compares um, the church to a garden-like um, location here on earth or a garden-like atmosphere here on earth. Um, I left you all with this quote, the body of Christ was created by God, not man. Um, while it is imperfect, I believe God gave it to us as a garden-like place in the midst of the struggles of this world, a place to meet with God, meet with his people and rest, naked and unashamed, totally transparent, a place to be ourselves. So the glory of gardens, the first was the glory of the garden in creation, and now the glory of God the glory of gardens and our redemption. I'm going to be flipping through my book here. Okay. So there are three different references in scripture about gardens um, ha surrounding the crucifixion and the resurrection. Sorry here. Get my Bible app open because I'm reading from some of it. Um, okay, here we go. So we see in Matthew 26. I'm not going to read all of that. Here we go. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So Jesus himself sought a garden um, in some of his most agonizing time on earth. Um, in his praying before he was led off to be crucified, he chose to be in the peace and comfort, I think, and quiet of a garden. And then we read in John 18.
when Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. So again, they came out of Jerusalem, across the Kidron Valley, and up to um, the Garden of Gethsemane. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. So here we see, you know, Jesus, this was someplace that Jesus went to a lot. Um, he sought out this, the, the, like I said, the peace and comfort of a garden, um, so much so that Judas knew where to find him. And um, you see that they come with torches and lanterns and weapons, um, invading and and totally just wiping out the peace and comfort of that of that space, um, and coming to get Jesus to take him away. So we have we have a peaceful garden, a, a place to pray, and a place to meet, and a place to be with his disciples, and then we have that that garden where he went to have that disrupted. And then in John 19, we have another garden. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So here is probably the most important garden um, in our redemption, the glory of the garden in our redemption where Jesus was raised. This is actually a picture of one of the gardens across um, from Jerusalem, um, across the Kidron Valley. These are olive trees. Um, it's, this is the Mount of Olives. Um, and there aren't, many, um, there aren't many gardens over there anymore. <laughs> um, this is not a picture that I took while we were there, but this was, we were, you can see the, the tourists in the background there and you can see the wall of Jerusalem a little bit over there. Um, but there are still gardens there, a few. Um, and this, this, some of these olive trees they think are close to a thousand years old. So not quite as old as the time of Christ, but, um, but this just, I just wanted you to see, this is, you know, kind of where he went um, to be, um, to have quiet and peace with his disciples, to pray. Um, to just be, be alone, maybe even. And then here is a picture of the garden tomb, which we also got to visit. Now, this is probably not where they laid him, but it could be. Um, it's not very far from Golgotha. In fact, we walked. Um, and you can tell here, you can see the groove where this, because this is a, a tomb that would have been used at the time of Christ. Um, you can see the, the groove here. They put a step over it so that we could step into the, the um, tomb and see it. But that was that's where the stone would have been rolling. <laughs> um, and this is a very peaceful, wonderful garden area. And so that's why they take people that visit over there to this garden tomb, because it's probably very much like the garden tomb where Jesus was laid, even if it's not the one. But again, a very beautiful, peaceful place. Um, and what, what an amazing thing that happened that Sunday morning. Um, and, and just, you know, when you're wandering through there, you can just imagine Mary walking through there so sad and wondering what in the world has happened. This stone has been rolled away and then having her encounter with the Lord. Um, a pretty amazing place. Um, so the glory of gardens throughout scripture. Does anybody have any comments?
questions. <laughs> I'm so I can see all my writing. I kind of have made all of you so I can't see you. And so, <laughs> all right. And finally, the glory of gardens in the final restoration, when things will be made right again, when things will be made whole again, um, when we won't have to deal with the fallen, um, sinful world that we're living in now. And if anybody would like to read this, you may. It's <laughs> Romans 8, 18, and then Revelation 22, 1 through 5. I'm going to take a couple swigs of water. I have Romans 8. Um, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is revealed is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the <clears throat> eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was not subjected to uh, futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it. In hope that the creation itself would be set free from its bondage to, to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, <clears throat> who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons and the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with patience. Okay, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about waiting later on. But um, these verses really not so much connected to a garden. However, just even thinking about the whole creation and how all everything will be made new again. Um, and so these, these present sufferings um, are not worth comparing to the glory of that of those new gardens, of that new, the, you know, new heaven, new earth, um, what, what we will experience in eternity. Um, that is just, that's an amazing section of scripture there to give us hope um, for what we will see later. And then in Revelation, it does actually talk about even some references to um, the tree of life in, in heaven. So if, whoever has that. I have it. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit e each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed but the throne of God and of the lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. What, and again, just another section of scripture that gives us so much hope. Um, for what is for what there is to come I love that that the tree of life there are 12 fruits for each month the different fruit um, and that that the leaves are for the healing of the nations because you know the nations have been subjected to um, the fall and and need healing so anyway just amazing um, verses to encourage us in that final restoration when when all is made new again. All right. And um, 
it also talked about light and um, we're about to go into the glory of Christ and his radiance. And so the end of, of Song of Songs 6, um, verses 10 through 13, um, who is this who looks down like the dawn, beautiful as the moon, bright as the sun, awesome as an army with banners? I went down to the nut orchard to look at the blossoms of the valley, to see whether the vines had budded, whether the pomegranates were in bloom. Before I was aware, my desire set me in me among the chariots of my kinsmen, a prince. Return, return, O Shulamite, return, return that we may look upon you. Why should you look upon the Shulamite as upon the da a dance before two armies? Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was just 10 through 13. Okay, so here is where um, we are seeing um, the well one of the greatest compliments that he pays to his um bride here um who is this who looks down like the dawn beautiful as the moon bright as the sun um do you guys remember what she said about herself in chapter one She said she was darkened from the sun. Mm -hmm. But she was, she felt, and she didn't feel beautiful. Um, and she was angry at her brothers for, you know, putting her out there in the garden or in to work the land and how she was so dark. And here he tells her she's as beautiful as the moon, bright as the sun, um, radiant, glowing, um, all those things that we can think of. So really, it had to mean a lot to her. Um, knowing, you know, what we know about her, that she, you know, she felt, she felt bad about herself because of that. And so um, Heidi Goman used this to kind of talk about how um, we have the glory of Christ and it is his radiance. Um, and that, you know, we think of the bright, the sun radiating the moon, you know, radiating light, everything looking, um, light and beautiful. And so um, here we have a little bit of a flow chart of um, Christ's radiance and then us shining like lights. Okay. So um, Hebrews 1, 1 through 3. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the, the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Um, so here, this talks about how Jesus is the exact radiance of the glory of God. Uh, he's the exact imprint of his nature. Um, you know, God's glory is Christ's glory. Um, and then Philippians... Okay, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may, may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. And so because we are in Christ, because we are God's, then we also shine 
like stars. We also have that radiance um, and glory in Christ. Let me make sure there's... Heidi says the spirit residing in us is true radiance and true beauty. Um, back to our, you know, verse of being altogether beautiful. Okay. Any comments or questions? All right, so that is, oh, one more quote. We are beautiful, radiant, and blessed because God calls us his. What an encouragement. And so that's kind of the end of Song of Songs 6. We're not even going to touch 7 <laughs> because there's just not enough time. Um if you guys would like, I can copy, uh, um, I believe I can. I don't think it's a copyright infringement for me to just let some of you have the pages that um, talk about chapter seven if you want them. So anyway, but we're going to move on to how she kind of wraps up this study. And it is with the theme, make haste, hence the... Um, I will hasten to you song. <laughs> um, song of Songs 8, 13 and 14. He says, um, O oh, you who dwell in the gardens with companions, listening for your voices, let me hear it. And she says to him, make haste, my beloved, and be like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of spices. And that is how Song of Songs ends. <laughs> Um, there really is no ending. She is saying, make haste, come to me, hasten to me, um, be like a gazelle, leaping, you know, hurrying. Um, and so really, it's more about even a, another beginning for them. Um, it's not, um, it's not an ending. And, you know, neither is our story ended. Um, so how do we make haste to our God? How does he hasten to us? God hastens for us. And we can see this in lots of his promises, but um, I picked out a couple of passages. First Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So he, you know, God pursues us. He hastens for us. He hurries. He is coming to get us. You know, we were chosen. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. God values us. He values our lives. And then Revelation 21, 3. And I heard a loud voice from the, from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. And I just, that just throws me right back to the Garden of Eden. Um, God was walking in the garden with Adam and Eve, and here, here we will be again. Um, you know, God will be with us and will be our God. What a day it will be. <laughs> so God hastens for us. He, you know, he pursued us. He um, moved urgently to, to come after us. God also hastens to create relationship with us, um, which I think both of these kind of go together. He hastens for us. He hastens to create a relationship with us. Um, 
Hebrews 10, 19 through 22. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Um, and she points out, well, I'll just go to the next slide. Therefore, since Jesus, Jesus changes everything. Because of his blood, we now can enter the, the holies, uh, holy of holies. You know, we now have confidence um, to be in that relationship with God that, that no, you know, only the high priest was allowed and only, you know, certain times and just everything has changed because of Christ. Um, and we now have that relationship. And so we need to be hastening to him just as our song said, but know that he, because he established so that um, relationship with us because of sending Christ, we can have that. Um, and so everything changed when that, um, with, with Jesus' death, of course, that's the whole turning point of, of our lives, of our history. Um, and God also hastens to create relationship for us. And I just love what she said here. Um, well, we're going to read Hebrews 10, 23 to 25. We're just going to continue in Hebrews here because it not only talks about how Christ, um, you know, cut down those, the walls that separated us and brought us um, to God, but he also, um, as we continue here, um, gave us one another. Um, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And I just feel like this could be a theme verse for COVID. Um, you know, let us hold fast to that hope without wavering because he, our God is faithful, but you know, we had to consider how to stir up one another to love and good works in this time. Um, we had to do things a lot differently. We had to learn new ways and new things and, and not neglecting to meet together um, was important during this time because, you know, we were shut down. And so we had to find ways to do that and to encourage one another. And I just, so appropriate that he ended that with all the more as you see the day drawing near, you know, you feel like, is that day drawing near? Because this, you know, this, this was a, a, you know, an interesting time that we've had. And so I hope that these classes have done this for us, um, you know, giving us a time to meet together and, and encouraging one another and stirring one another up to love and good works. I just, I really hope and pray that that's what this has accomplished for you. It certainly has for me. And so here's another quote for, from Heidi. God created the church for our benefit. He gave us the gift or he gives us the gift of one another. And you all certainly are gifts to me. So in the meantime, <laughs> while we're waiting for that day to come, um, what do we do? We wait, as I just said, we wait for him, um, patiently wait. Um, Isaiah, Isaiah 40, 31 is the verse that talks about waiting um, for the Lord. And so that's a really good one to, to go to. Because um, in the meantime, we're still in this fallen world. And, um, you know, we want to say, come Lord Jesus, because, you know, things are not right. Um, but we must wait. We also stand on his promises. 
which was another song that I almost did. <laughs> um, we stand on his promises and Romans 421 talks about that, uh, you know, how Abraham, well, wait a minute, let me look that up to make sure. Cause I was looking at several different verses for that. Yes, this is the one that talks about Abraham fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. Um, talking about Abraham and having Isaac. So fully convinced that God was able to do what he promised. So we stand on those promises, fully convinced that God is able to keep those his promises. We fix our eyes on Jesus. And of course, that's you know, Hebrews 2, 12, 2, um, keeping our eyes on him always. And we realize that our story is not finished. Um, just as Song of Songs ends with a new beginning almost, um, you know, it's incomplete um, because the story is not finished and neither is our story finished. And I'll go ahead and read Philippians 1, 6 here. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. He began a good work in us, but he's not finished yet. Thanks, ladies, <laughs> for being a part of this class, and I hope you will continue to be a part of our other classes. <laughs>